everybody. Today is October 7th. This is Dave Scher. Welcome back to the audio section of PW Insider at Leaf.com. I think I should know where I work, but sometimes I don't. I'm, I'm just that way sometimes. Uh, some stuff to get into today. I'm going to debut a new feature today on the site. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, how is the talent roster in WWE? How... You know, how weak is it? How strong is it? Do they not have guys? So I figured what I'm going to do is, each week, I'm going to pick one guy on the WWE roster, and I'm going to look at at their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, how they've been used thus far, uh, and if they've been pushed to the point of no return. Uh, By that, of course, I mean if they push down the card, where they could never come back and really be anything more than they could, uh, you know, if, if, if they could reach a higher potential. So I'm going to start with John Cena today since he is the top guy in the, in the company. And obviously the fourth one of those is not going to be applicable. But I wasn't going to start with this, but let's start with this since I'm, I'm talking about it. John Cena's obviously got many strengths for WWE. Uh, no matter how you feel about him, he is legit, a legitimate top-of-the-card guy. Uh, is he an all-time great? Is he Steve Austin or The Rock or Hulk Hogan? No, but there's been a lot of eras where you've had guys that you know, were at the top of the card that weren't that. Is he is he an equal to Randy Savage? I I think so for sure. Um, is is he you know greater than an Ultimate Warrior? I think so. Is he greater than a Sting? I think so. I think he's done way more business than that. So John Cena is a legitimate number one top guy that you could put at the top of your cards. And, and know that you've got a main event guy in that position. Uh, obviously, he is a great uh, merchandise seller, and he appeals to children. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The man sells a ton of merchandise, um, and that makes him big for WWE. Absolutely. I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't take advantage of that. And, and for those of you that are like, oh, they could turn him heel, you know, maybe some point, because he will be the exception to the rule, I believe in a lot of cases uh, where you have have guys that the longer they're with the company, the harder it is to, to turn them heel. We saw that with Steve Austin. You've seen that in the past with Ric Flair. There's guys that just the longer they're there, they become you know, part of the fabric of, of what the fan believes in and thinks. Um, it, it matters in the company. So that, that won't be tough. But he will be uh, – you know, he is a guy they could turn. That's not going to happen anytime soon. He's a legitimate top merchandising Guy and he appeals to children for a company that markets, uh, if not expressly, certainly in a big way, to young kids. So uh, you know that in and of itself will, will preclude a heel turn. But top merch seller, that's big, no doubt about it. He's a great company man. No matter what you say about him, the man is a great company man. Uh, he does what's asked of him, sometimes to the detriment of the overall product. But he's loyal to Vince McMahon. He does what Vince wants him to do, even when he doesn't agree with it. And, you know, there are people that say, oh, he should step up, he should do this, he should do that, he should tell Vince, no, that doesn't work, he should get on a plane and leave like Austin does. And that's just not who the guy is. If you're expecting that from John Cena, you're, you're, you're basically expecting a man to have a baby because it's not what's going to happen. Men don't have babies. John Cena is a company man. He will voice his opinion, but he's not going to, he's not going to balk and go up against Vince and fight with him, you know, the way that Hulk Hogan did and Steve Austin did and Shawn Michaels did you know, over the years. He's also an excellent representative of the company. You know, yesterday alone, and this doesn't even count all the make-a-wishes he's done, but yesterday alone, there were two instances where John Cena showed the great value he has to WWE. When he appeared on the Today Show in the morning, uh, you know, he, he just came across so well. He came across as a guy that if you're going to look up to somebody in that company and, you, and you're, you're going to put somebody out there to say, this is what's good about our company, John Cena comes off that way. Then there was the incident last night on Raw when Joe in London did her her speech before the crowd, which was was very touching and very uh, very heartfelt. And I, it was it was a really nice moment on the show. You know, there's John Cena coming out for his match, hugs her, and walks her to the back. And that seems like a little thing, but it's not. It's a big thing. It's it's this man is WWE, and he represents them extremely well. You have to, no matter how you feel about the guy, you have to uh, respect that from him. Something else that he doesn't get credit for a lot, and certainly uh, he, he is a much better wrestler than people give him credit for. The folks that chant "You can't wrestle," they they just don't get it. Does he do tope con helos? No. You know, th- does he know every hold in the book? No. But the man knows how to tell a story with his match. He knows how to work hard, 
And, if, you know, when you put him out there with a good story to tell, he can tell it for you. And, and he doesn't get credit for that, and, and he really should. The other thing you have to say about him, no matter how you feel about him, the man's durable as all hell. When he gets an injury, which is, is not all that often, he comes back quicker than expected every single time. He is dependable. He's durable. You can count on John Cena. So John Cena, you know, for all the weaknesses people like to talk about where he's concerned, you have to consider those strengths, and they are very, very big strengths. Now, his weaknesses, which, of course, we know, the number one weakness that he has is really not even his fault. His number one weakness is basically due to the fact that he is who he is. He's John Cena. He's the guy I just described in every way, shape, or form. He's a company man. He's durable. He's a legitimate top guy. He represents the company well. So because of that, Vince McMahon constantly uses him as a crutch. He constantly books him at the expense of other talent. He keeps him at the top of the card. And, and basically, you know, if, if you're talking about dating, uh, the dating scene when you go out with your friend and you're trying to hit on a woman, and then he gets in the middle of it, it's called a cock block. Basically, John Cena is the cock block. For everybody else, and it's not John Cena's fault. I mean, your, your friend's usually trying to get in between you and the lady. Uh, you know, John Cena is, is just the guy that Vince McMahon says, that guy's no John Cena, let's push John. You know, up oh, John, John showed a little bit of vulnerability last week, let's feed these four guys to John. And, and it's not John's fault that that's who he is, but that's who Vince sees, and because of that, because John is who he is, that's a weakness, because it makes Vince... Uh, not commit to giving other talents a chance, not pushing other talents up the top of the card when they deserve a chance. And, and you know, that's nothing John can do about that, but that's part of the problem. Uh, another problem he has is he has the ability to improvise on promos during, uh, during his, his on, on-air uh, moments. And there are times when, when he de- reaches back into his mind to come up with the message he wants to get out there, it doesn't come across so well. You know, the, the, the King Poopy stuff you know, from years ago. And, uh, you know, sometimes he can be very impassioned, and sometimes, you know, he thinks he's going down a good road, but it, it's not. And, and that hurts. You know, that's part of the reason that there's a lot of male fans out there that will never like him. And, again, that's another weakness that he has that's, you know, and that is a, a problem of his own, and that's the fact that he does turn off some adult male fans. And let's be honest here. WWE's, you know, certainly, if not their number one priority, their number one A priority, would be at this point in time to sell network subscriptions. Uh, obviously, they want to keep their TV partners happy because that brings in more revenue. But really, the top priority right now, because they have the TV deal in a good place for a while, is to sell subscriptions. And his presence at the top of the card, his, his you know, basic cock blocking of the other talent, is a primary reason why some adult male fans will not buy the network. So, Again, and that, that weakness, you know, is a combination of, of how Vince McMahon uses him and how he is. You know, it's a shame. You know, if he was a guy that said very little and he just went out there and worked, he'd be a lot better off in a lot of ways. But, but the promos he does sometimes and, and the storylines that he's put in where he's booked as Superman, you know, and again, that's a Vince thing, but it falls on him, that turns people off. So, you know, those negatives are, are real. Uh, his current spot in the company and what should be his spot – you can't deny John Cena's a top guy and deserves to be a top guy in WWE. You can't deny that. If you deny that, you're just being totally unrealistic, and you're letting uh, Vince Russo like hate get in your hot, and, and you're not being honest. John, John Cena's a top guy, and if you want to keep him as a dominating top guy as he, as he goes into his late 30s, you can. I mean, I, I don't think that's the right call. I don't think that's what you should do, but you could do that. Personally, where I think he should be at this point is a guy, for example, perfect scenario. Right now he's fighting with Dean Ambrose, okay? So whoever wins their match at Hell in the Cell gets to take on Seth Rollins in in the Cell. It it should be Dean Ambrose. See, there's nothing wrong with John Cena putting guys over. If If he loses one and then wins the next five and then loses one and wins the next five, that's fine, and that's the one thing they haven't done with him. And in fact, I think it will make his character uh, more appealing to the fans, especially the adult male fans, uh, but also to the young fans, because if John doesn't win them all, when he comes back and wins the next one, that will make his fans even more excited, and it will show the adult fans that, hey, you know, this guy is progressing the business. You, got, you know, the adult fans tend to like Dean Ambrose. So if John Cena puts Dean Ambrose over, 
then you look at John Cena like, yeah, he put over Dean Ambrose. That's pretty damn cool. I respect that. That's what they should be doing with him, and hopefully the direction they're going in. Um, has he been booked so badly that he can't come back from it? I, we talked about that one at the start of this. No, of course not. <laughs> the man's been booked. I mean, you, you get into this business, you pray you get booked the way John Cena's been booked. So, no, of course, he's been booked uh, very well. So, t- today, that was my new feature that I want to bring in on the hotline every week. Um, obviously, today, you had to start at the top, and the, the fourth one won't come into play. But going forward, there's going to be a lot of those that will come into play, and we'll talk about them here and offer suggestions for how you can change guys up, perhaps, and, and take it from there. 